You probably wonder, how can these 10 changes in this video alone let me become a pro Rome 2 player, while other people have to get hundreds and even thousands of hours of experience to get to a veteran skill level? Well, let's begin. The first change in your playstyle starts with having a strong plan, whether it is attacking or defending a settlement or fighting a land battle. Every pro player compared to a beginner knows how and where to attack or defend a settlement. But that's not the big difference between a pro player and a beginner, because nowadays the beginners pick up fairly quickly how and where to fight your battles. But the big difference is understanding why you want to defend Tarsus at that choke point in that certain way once they've broken through your outer defenses. Then you're more likely to adjust and perform better at new situations or unexpected unexpected moments. That's the big difference between a pro and a beginner. Most of the times it's not about having better micro than the other player, but a player that has a strong strategy and game plan can defeat a player with strong micro. Change number 2 in your playstyle is stop taking archer fights like you used to do. This really shows if you're a beginner, a mid tier player or a high tier player. For sieges, first of all make sure you use some of your ammo on infantry before you take an archer fight. The reason why you want to do that is explained in the top 10 tips video that you probably already watched. Once you've done that, you probably used to get all your archers at one place to start the archer fight with your enemy. Then you're probably looking at your archers hoping to win, but if you're not, you retreat all of them and start a new fight at another moment and place. Well the next time that you take Taking an archer fight, I want you to fight the archers, but take a closer look at what archer they are shooting at and dodge with it, so the rest of your archers can continue to fire and you take minimal losses. Dodging with your archers is pretty easy to do, but takes a lot of micro. The warning with that is, never start an archer fight and you're planning to dodge while you're also fighting infantry. Let your teammates do that, because you won't be able to do them both. The same counts for land battles. The only thing is that you can't really dodge in land battles, but there are still smart ways to fight archer fights in land battles. So the first tip for your archer fights is make sure your archers or slingers are standing really spread out. This way they will take less damage because the archers and the slingers of your enemy will shoot more volleys over their heads or in front of them compared to when they are in a thicker formation. This way you will take less damage and eventually deal more damage. You can see this in the experience that I did, which is a slinger fight with exactly the same slingers but one is spread out and one is not. The difference is actually really big. The spread out archer will win against the more chunky archer with 64 men, which is a really big difference. And the next tip is to avoid missile fights when you know you're going to lose them, because you're outnumbered or outmatched. Make sure to pull them back in your back lines to shoot some infantry or possibly cavalry. But don't start a losing archer fight because you think it's total war and it's traditional to start with a missile fight in the land battle before the infantry starts to fight. Don't do that. But I'm curious what you guys would rate yourself in terms of skill and knowledge, for total war in general or specifically Rome 2. And rate yourself with beginner, mid tier or experienced. Let's see how our community is looking like. But make sure to rate it after this video because you probably think now you're experienced, but after getting the knowledge that I give you, that could maybe change. <laughs> Change number 3 in your playstyle is understand how to use hoplites. This can sometimes really easy tell if someone is a noob or a mid tier player slash experienced player. Because first of all, don't bring any spears or hoplites units except these hoplites and these spears. Those are the only ones that are worth bringing. So once you see people using other units than these spears and hoplites, you can tell that they are low. Here's one example of how ridiculously bad some hoplites are. Here you see a Peruka spear hoplite, which costs 510, fighting a Celtic warrior which costs 350 gold, and they didn't even manage to get 20 kills against him, even though the unit costs like 200 less. It's just ridiculous. But the next step is how to use actually these hoplites in game against the overall stronger swords and axes. The first way how you can use hoplites is to put them into the front lines and into hoplite wall and then create a little gap for your, for your spears, archers or swords with pila behind you to throw pila at the units that you're fighting. This is a very effective way to grind down your enemy, in choke points in the city but also on land battles. The other meta to use your hoplites is the battle body system. What you basically do is you put a hoplite into the front line in hoplite wall for the 5 bonus versus infantry and support it with most of the times a lower cost unit as a battle body so you can fight together. This way your hoplites will get surrounded less often. This is very beneficial because this way you don't get the debuffs from getting attacked in the sides or rear. How much these debuffs are and all the hidden mechanics and stats around it and much more I will be explaining in a future video so make sure to subscribe so you won't miss that. The next change in your playstyle is using your general abilities and you should really always use the strategist general ability which makes your units fresh with the second wind ability and gives your unit more melee attack and weapon damage with the battle rhythm. This sounds probably obvious but I catch a lot of good players and also myself not using their general abilities and not having their general even close to their main army that's fighting. If you want to train yourself to constantly use your general abilities make sure to play with elite spam army like Swaby with the sword masters. 
hands. When you use them, you obviously want to use head hunt, and after that they get exhausted, so you're forced to use your second win abilities, and with that comes the battle rhythm. Change number 5 to level up your playstyle is making sure your units are always in winning engagements. But how do you know that, especially as a beginner, which unit will come on top in a matchup between two different units? Well, it's fairly simple, you just hover over the unit that's fighting, and it will tell you if the unit is winning, or the combat is even, or if it's losing. You always want to try to be in winning engagements. If it's losing, just get it out of combat and cycle charge with a unit that's stronger in your army. When the combat is even, you can leave it to fight, but you can also try and win it by cycle charging with different units, or get in shoot wall and throw pila with the unit behind you. So that's another tip which comes with this change in your playstyle, is to make sure to cycle charge when you're losing or the combat is even. But when your unit is winning, don't cycle charge it for nothing, just leave it in there to fight, and you will win the battle. All of this takes a lot of attention and micro, which also brings us to the next change in your playstyle, which is stop spreading out your micro too thin, and start focusing on less things, but do those things better, like dodging and archer battles, or cycle charging in infantry fights. I see a lot of people willing to do too many things at once, but trust me, it's better to focus at a few things, you will take less losses, and deal more damage. And with that comes change number 7 in your playstyle, which is keeping your army together. This counts for land battles, but also for siege battles. For land battles, if you're standing really spread out, or split in two, your opponent can focus on one part of your army, while the other part of your army that are far away will be too late to reinforce the one side that's already fighting. And if your opponent does it right, you can get cut off from the rest of your army, which could result into a massive loss. For siege battles as a defender, you want to defend a certain part of the settlement. This way you can focus your micro at that part and perform better. If you got units all over the city, you will forget some of your units and you will play less effective. As an attacker, you want to keep your army together wherever you go. If you're fighting at the breach, bring your whole army near the breach, so you can reinforce it with infantry when it's needed. And this way you can support your fighting infantry at the breach with archer fire. But make sure to put always your archers at the left side of your main force. This way you can get more non-shield archer shots into your enemy, which is really effective. The next change in your playstyle is start putting really cheap units on the wall like slaves or something to absorb the scorpion bolts from the upcoming towers. This prevents your more expensive units getting shots from those scorpion bolts, and they will do a lot of damage. There are two ways how you can do this effectively without losing too many of your slaves. The first way is to put your slaves in a really thin formation on the wall. This way it will be harder to get hit by the scorpion bolts, and this way only one slave dies by every scorpion bolt. Instead of putting them clumped up like this where they will take way more losses. Because every soldier counts, even your slaves. <laughs> but the best way is to put already units on the wall and leave some space between each other, and then after you did that, then you put your slaves on the wall and put them in a really thin formation. After that you gotta remove your units that you already put on the wall, and this way one slave will cover a larger part of the wall to absorb more more scorpion bolts and to protect more of your units. So that's a nice little trick to know. And the last important change in your playstyle is getting better at getting through the walls, for barbarian settlements and for normal settlements. Because this is the most crucial moment of your attack, where you most of the time take the most losses. So improving getting through the walls and getting your first little ground with minimal losses will benefit you throughout the whole siege. Well how can you do that? The first important thing is know the best places to attack for every city. And how can you recognize those places? Well most of the times these are core Corners. You should be always looking out for corners, those are the best places to attack, because you can get side shots, and the most important side shot you'll be looking for is, well you should know it already at this moment, but it's obviously the non-shield side shots, I can't stress that enough. <laughs> So find a corner where you can attack from with your main army and be able to put your archers at the left of them to get those non-shield side shots. This is the best way to attack and obviously bring a faction with tortoises. For barbarian settlements it's the same thing but you can't make breaches with your tortoises. So you gotta bring an artillery piece to make a breach in the wall and the best way to do this is by firing manually. This way you will waste less of your ammunition and you can use some to shoot at blobbed up targets. You can still use your towers to support your breach but making a breach is a must. So yeah I'm curious to see you guys ranking yourself i'll be looking at the comments and don't forget to choose between beginner mid-tier player and experienced and don't forget to like the video if it helped you out so it will help more rome 2 players and i will see you guys in the 10 tips video which is now on your screen